I'm Dr. Andrew Elagizi with the Department of Internal Medicine at Oshner Leonard J. Chabert Medical Center, Houma, Louisiana. Dr. Carl J. Levy with the Department of Cardiology at the John Oshner Heart and Vascular Institute, New Orleans. And Dr. Tobias Kohler with the Department of Urology at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. And myself have prepared the state-of-the-art review regarding testosterone and cardiovascular health. We felt that this was an important topic to review considering that it has been associated with much controversy and confusion in recent years among both patients and caregivers alike. In 2013 and 14, two particular studies were released which received tremendous media attention following their reports of increased mortality, myocardial infarction, and stroke in patients receiving testosterone therapy. In 2015, before it was known that both of these studies were critically flawed, the United States FDA released a statement advising increased caution with the use of testosterone products, a statement which multiple organizations, including the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, considered to be lacking scientific evidence. In 2015, an international expert consensus panel regarding testosterone deficiency and its treatment was held. The panel produced nine conclusive statements, all of which receiving unanimous approval, and it was stated that low testosterone is a global public health concern, that testosterone therapy for patients with hypogonadism is effective, rational, and evidence-based, and the panel was in agreement with the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists that the evidence does not support increased risk of cardiovascular events. It is clear that testosterone deficiency is associated with increased adverse cardiovascular events, including mortality, regardless of traditional risk factors. Normally, testosterone levels peak in males at age 30 and subsequently decline 1-2% to per year. Testosterone levels also decrease abruptly with acute stresses such as myocardial infarction, sepsis, and trauma. And testosterone levels are also reduced with chronic illnesses such as hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, renal failure, and malignancy. Due to all of these confounding variables, it therefore remains unknown if testosterone deficiency has a causal effect on cardiovascular disease and events, or if testosterone deficiency is simply a marker of poor overall health. In addition to being associated with increased cardiovascular disease and events, testosterone deficiency is also associated with an unfavorable phenotypic profile, which includes decreased lean body mass and bone mineral density, loss of energy and libido, as well as an unfavorable metabolic profile, which includes increased insulin resistance, diabetes, LDL levels, and inflammatory cytokine release. Although many of these factors are improved with testosterone therapy in multiple studies, the improvements have been found to be reversed in some studies following discontinuation of testosterone therapy. Therefore, further studies are needed in order to understand the sustainability of potential benefits of testosterone therapy. Testosterone deficiency has been demonstrated to be an independent parameter for time to mortality in patients with coronary disease in some studies, suggesting that testosterone levels may potentially be used as a valuable prognostic indicator in these patients. And although there are studies that demonstrate increased time to ischemia in patients with coronary disease receiving testosterone therapy, there are also studies that suggest increased coronary plaque burden with testosterone use in these patients. Overall, regarding coronary disease and testosterone therapy, the evidence is inconclusive. Testosterone is also a topic of increasing interest with regards to heart failure, considering that a significant proportion of patients with heart failure have evidence of testosterone deficiency and that testosterone levels are often decreased in proportion to heart failure severity. These associations would make testosterone replacement an attractive potential therapeutic option for patients with heart failure, and multiple studies have shown increased functional capacity with testosterone therapy in heart failure patients. However, no studies were found during this review that reported improvements in left ventricular ejection fraction, suggesting that a benefit in heart failure patients with testosterone therapy is likely due to some peripheral mechanism. Considering that low testosterone is associated with increased cardiovascular disease, a study in which testosterone levels are intentionally reduced could support or refute the hypothesis that testosterone deficiency actually causes cardiovascular events. Well, androgen deprivation therapy does just that intentionally reduces testosterone levels in patients with prostate cancer. There are multiple modes of androgen deprivation therapy. Gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist therapy, for example, has particularly been associated with increased cardiovascular events in multiple studies, and we highlight some possible mechanisms. First, gonadotropin releasing hormone receptors are found on T lymphocytes, 
which are known to be a part of the erythromatous plaques, the activation of which can lead to plaque instability. Further, gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulates the anterior pituitary to release follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, and FSH has the potential to increase atherosclerosis and inflammation. Overall, we agree with the European Association of Urology Prostate Cancer Guidelines that evidence regarding androgen deprivation therapy in cardiovascular disease is not consistent. Although we do highlight a certain mechanism of one mode of androgen deprivation therapy, which may be detrimental to cardiovascular health. Testosterone is also an important topic with regards to cardiovascular health in females, considering that coronary disease is the leading cause of death in postmenopausal women. Following menopause, a drop in estrogen levels with constant or elevated levels of testosterone causes a period of relative androgen excess during the menopausal transition. It has been hypothesized that this relative androgen excess during the menopausal transition is at least partly responsible for the increased cardiovascular risk in postmenopausal females. Testosterone therapy is also used in female populations, for example, for the treatment of decreased libido. And at the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists 24th Annual Scientific and Clinical Congress, it was stated that benefits of testosterone replacement for testosterone deficiency in men and women substantially outweigh any potential risks. We agree with the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, American College of Endocrinology, and International Expert Consensus Panel that testosterone treatment should be considered for symptomatic men with clinically confirmed hypogonadism, that there is no compelling evidence that testosterone increases or decreases cardiovascular risk, and that treatment for testosterone deficiency is effective, rational, and evidence-based. On behalf of Dr. Levy, Dr. Kohler, and myself, thank you for watching this short video, and thank you to the Mayo Foundation. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.